one thing we're concerned about is Ben's image. Yeah, you're right. Look, I apologise. He's a slob. He's totally unprofessional. But what do I keep telling you, mate? No, 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 not at all. We're thinking more about lifting his profile. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Look, it's a double chin, isn't it? Look, I know a guy. He normally works on orangutans. Get it fixed up. Shouldn't be a problem. PR. Hey, Mr. Hammond, you can PR. Uh, PR, public relations. Exactly. Ben needs a publicist. More like a team of publicists. Uh, sure, uh, whatever the case, let's get Ben some more attention. Send him to some big events. Organize some well-known dates. Get some guest spots. That sounds really wonderful, thanks. It's, it's all about getting people to fall in love with Ben. Who? Me! Hey, with a temper like that, no wonder you're scaring them off, off in drones. I'm not scaring them off in drones. Can we organize something, please? That'd be good. Yeah, look, I know this amazing publicist. Lovely woman. She'll have his name right up there. Flashing in lights, Ben Murray. Murphy! Look, leave it with me, okay? Could have been safer hands. Talk soon. Welcome to Live from St Kilda. Here's your host with the most, Ben Murphy! Thank you! Oh, good evening. Hello. Thank you so much for spending the night with us, uh, especially now that there are so many great options to choose from, from amazing, incredible shows like The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills or The Real Housewives of New York or, or even Melbourne, Pontemac, Atlanta, Jersey or The Real Housewives of Cheshire or Love Island, Love Island, Australia, Love Island, UK, Bachelorette, Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise, Bachelorette in Paradise, Survivor, Survivor Australia, Survivor Brains vs. Brawn, Survivor Fans vs. Champions, Survivor Champions vs. Fans, Survivor Fiji, Thailand, Vanuatu, Survivor Philippines, Philippines, Big Brother, Big Brother VIP, Big Sister, Big Brother in Paradise, the real Big Brother of Cheshire. The quality of original content out there is overwhelming. Uh, speaking of crap, today is International Toilet Day. Yeah. Now, did you know that toilets are actually a lot stronger than they look? Uh, I tell you what, mine needs to be, for sure. Now, in the event of a tornado destroying your house, the toilet always remains standing. So if little old Dorothy from Kansas has decided to take a leak, it would have saved her a lot of trouble. And not only is it Toilet Day, but it's also International Men's Day. I know, finally, two great things to celebrate. One of which is filled with crap and stinks up the entire house, and the other, a toilet. Uh, I tell you what, International Men's Day is a necessary and important holiday. It's finally the chance to change history and allow men to have our opinions and thoughts heard and to finally get some visibility amongst the public. There are many customs to this holiday, including traditional house decoration and uh, preparing traditional feast men's style. Uh, I'm part of many men's movements, including the effort for an AFLM team, Australian Football League Men's. Uh, it's essentially the same as AFL, except players will wear shorter shorts and get paid 50% less. Huh? <laughs> oh, that's AFLW. <laughs> My bad. Uh, tonight, we've got the incredible recording artist Mitch Tambo who will be joining us. Yeah. Uh, Mitch Tambo shot to fame with his rendition of John Farnham's You're the Voice, which he performed in the indigenous language of Gamilaray. And I have to say, it's a lot better than my drunk uncle Keith's karaoke version. And damn John Farnham from telling everyone they were the voice. Some people just shouldn't be, and they should understand it. Put the mic down and walk away. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I rest my point. Never mind. Uh, also tonight, we have Monsieur Cocktail, um, Maximilian Beale, who will be joining us here in studio. A mixologist who will be teaching us how to make the best summer cocktails. We've got some random game show and more. So open up your socials. Give us a like on Insta and Facebook at Live from St Kilda. And chat with myself and the team throughout the show. But for now, welcome to Live from Secure with me, Ben Murphy. It's time to play some random game show. Oh, whoa, that was a bit of a jump there. I got a little bit too excited. Uh, prior to the show, we selected two contestants to come up for their chance to win an incredible prize from Relax and Play. Tony, who are we joined by today? Ben, today's lucky contestants are Lou, who works in IT, from Mount Waverley, who enjoys spending time with her two cats. Her opponent today is Simone, an event manager from Paran. Yeah! Simone enjoys making quirky cocktails. Ooh, Simone, a bit of an alcoholic. I try. I you try? try. <laughs> oh, look, did you know the more you drink, the better this show gets? So uh, I hope you at home are following that advice and you're drinking up because I become a little bit more funny. Uh, what is your favourite cocktail to make? Uh, I probably like something with gin in it. With gin in it? Yep. A, a lot of gin a lot and just of a, gin. a little bit of something else. Uh, a lot of gin, maybe something like a shambord and then something else in it. 
Oh, alcohol, well, just just enough so you can just yeah. black out and forget <laughs> the life's going on. Now, uh, joining you is your sister, mm. uh, Lou. Now, Lou, uh, it's also International Toilet Day. Uh, is it uh, International <laughs> Lou Day as well? Because those names are... Every day is International Lou Day. <laughs> oh, there you I love your modesty there. <laughs> now, uh, Lou, you, uh, you have two cats. I do. I love my cats. Uh, so a bit of gin and a bit of crying for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, who's more competitive out of you two? Are you both? Uh, who's, who's more likely to win, though, in a game? Ah, excellent. Well, today we do have a fantastic prize. Uh, who is our prize from, Tony? Well, Ben, today's champion will receive a $100 dinner voucher. Thanks to our fabulous sponsor, Relax and Play, Melbourne's number one kids-friendly family entertainment centre. Ah, oh, a $100 dinner voucher. That is excellent. Uh, because you're both sisters, if one of you wins, are you going to take the other one or are you just going to go alone? Yeah, I'll take you along. Thank you. Oh, that's really nice. She said she won't take you along, though, so you're the nicest. Not if you to... bring your cat. <laughs> Are you two the favourite siblings at home? Oh, no. No, definitely not, no. No, no. We have a brother. Ah, he's, we won't talk about him. He's, he's not here today. Well, today we are playing a fantastic game called Movie Mix-Up. Uh, in this game, the titles have been rejigged with new words and you need to guess the original movie title. For example, Knife Jogger would be Blade Runner. Once I read the questions, buzz in as soon as you think you know what it is. Uh, if you get stuck, it might be nice to share some hints. Uh, correct point wins you the point. Incorrect answers bring shame to you and your family <laughs> and make your brother more likely to continue being the favourite. Here we go. Are you ready? Question ready. one. One, figurine fable. Oh, uh, you were in uh, Simone. Toy Story? Toy Story, oh. correct. We have one for Simone. Very wow. good. She was quick. Uh, lawfully fair haired. Oh, you were in, Lou? I think that has to be legally blonde. Legally blonde, very good. Uh, interesting, you don't really hear uh, any more blonde jokes. I think it's about time we bring back some sexism and blonde jokes, don't you think? <laughs> no, maybe not, wrong climate. Uh, the feline ruler. That's not you uh, at home with your cats. It's got something to do with cats. Yes, you were in, Lou. <laughs> The Lion King. The Lion King. Hey. Two points to Simone. <laughs> All right. Here we go. This one's a little bit tricky. Here we go. The communal system. System. I'll give you a clue. Most of us use it every day. It's not a toilet, is it? <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg is the lead character in this movie. Oh, um... It's the social network! Oh, never mind. Yes. There's no winner there except for Facebook, who win <laughs> daily. Ooh. All right. The pure, the wicked, and the hideous. Pure. Yes! The good, the bad, and the ugly? Correct! <laughs> that goes to Simone. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, not to be confused with my husband, my ex, and my first crush. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, the ordinary accused. Oh, the ordinary accused. Take your time. I uh, don't. We've only clue, got five minutes. Segment coming. Clue. Clue. All right. It's a '90s mystery thriller. It's the Usual Suspects. Time oh. is out. All right. Here we go. The Baron of the Bands. Oh, the Baron of the Bands. The Baron of the Bands. Have you got it at home? Uh, my precious. Oh. oh yes, Simone, you were in. L um. Lord of the Rings. Correct! Which means Simone on three points, uh, sorry, Lou on three points is our winner! You have won! You've won yourself a hundred dollar voucher thanks to our really good friends at Relax and Play, Melbourne's best family friendly entertainment. Uh, still to come, master mixologist Monsieur Cocktail will be teaching us how to mix the most delicious summer drinks and recording artist Mitch Tambo will talk about his new track, Dreamtime Princess. Anyway, while I go convince this debt collector I'm not Ben Murphy, here is your movie title, You Go think it's a nose ear mouth hand eyes and a number good luck congratulations <laughs>Welcome back. I spent all that time trying to convince the debt collector I wasn't Ben Murphy, and turns out even he didn't know who I was anyway. <laughs> Your You Go Thin clue was nose, ear, mouth, hand, eyes, and a number. It is, of course, The Sixth Sense. Hey, uh, what did the movie Titanic and The Sixth Sense have in common? I see dead people. <laughs> this is Chit Chat. 
From his rendition of Australian classic John Farnham's You're the Voice, sung in the indigenous language of Gamilaray, to having had six number one world music songs that his recent hits, Heal, Love and Dreamtime Princess, all bringing smiles as they blast through stereos everywhere. Please welcome my guest today, the extraordinary Mitch Tambo. Hello! Yummy, yummy. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being here. It's, it's really good to see you again. Now, nah, look, it's... Uh... It's great to catch up and have a yarn again. I love it. <laughs> now, I have to say, I'm surprised by how fresh you look, because if a little birdie's correct, you've recently become a new father. That's right, hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, brand new, brand new bundle of joy, a brand new addition to the family. And, um, yeah, we're just so pumped. Hey? It's such a precious time to be a part of. They change and grow every hour. Oh, they do indeed. They keep growing up. Hey, uh, yesterday I was on my walk, uh, listening to your music, getting ready for our interview today, as I tend to do before an interview. And on my walk, I found this, which I believe is a uh, feather of a yellowtail cockatoo, which, if I'm correct, is also your symbol. Is that correct? I wear the red. Oh, the red. Yeah, I do. But yeah, that looks like a yellowtail. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's the, uh, the symbolism of a red-tail cockatoo feather? Uh, the red is, uh, for us, where I come from, Gamilaray, we believe that the red-tailed black up two um, brought us the, the weed, the fire. Um, so when I wear it, I wear it symbolically of keeping the fire burning, um, keeping our culture alive, that, that significance of that continual, I guess, cycle of our culture and life of our culture. And it, it has other meanings and um, messaging, and especially around the headdress. But, yeah, that's, that's one of the messages there. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of uh, fire and, and keeping your language alive, you certainly do that with your music. And I think one of the first times I ever heard your tracks um, was the song Love. I was doing my radio show and this song that I hadn't heard on before in uh, Indigenous language came on and it blew me away. And at radio, you're not meant to play the same song more than once. But 15 minutes later, I had to put Love on again. It's such an incredible song. Uh, what's the meaning behind it? Yeah, so it's really about, I guess, going back on country and allowing that healing to take place. And then the second verse is, you know, being set free, having your heart um, broken open and your spirit set free. Yeah. Um, you know, being able to soar. So, yeah, so I guess it's a bit of a healing anthemic song. And uh, Mitch, you've got a new song out at the moment, uh, which is also the title track of your new album, Dreamtime Princess. Now, uh, I've been known to daydream quite a lot on set and i've been told i could be a bit precious uh, is that what dreamtime princess is about ego people like me i wish it was that simple <laughs> no it's not dreamtime princess is really about combating domestic violence so not not quite Fairly different to you being precious up in the studio but yeah <laughs> you can use it for that if you want but um yeah so dreamtime princess really comes from an era where um probably back in roughly 2016 maybe i'd it brought me back to a time when I was much younger and being asked by some brother boys, you know, what kind of partner do you want one, one day? And I turned around and said, I want a DTP. And everyone was like, what's that? Yeah, what is that? Dreamtime Princess. Ah. And everyone just was laughing, I remember. And, <laughs> you know, I was brought back to that time and thought to myself, wow, this could be a great song title. I'm going to create a song. And I laid a beat. And as soon as I laid a beat, it was like the ancestors said to me, you know, no, nah, there's so much more to this song then even you know you need to go on a bit of a journey and it was almost like a spiritual awakening for a week i started to have real conversations with some sisters around me about their experience with um domestic violence and the situations yeah. they'd been in and um not long after that i started to research the statistics and the severe overrepresentation in my community around dv and hospitalization around dv and things like that and uh and then I actually went and saw the movie Black Panther and funnily enough, I walked away from it feeling super emotional because of the way that the women were depicted, I thought was so beautiful. They were fierce warriors um, at the front, leading the pack, had all of this beauty um, and strength. And it made me think about our ancestors and our women, our matriarchs before colonisation, how they would have had yeah. all, all these beautiful attributes, you know, like not that they don't now, of course they carry those attributes now, but I mean, you know, being out there at the front of our clans and tribes and being held in all of this high esteem and not in this overrepresented um, experience that, you know, we have today. Well, you know what, uh, with an incredible message like that, let's take a look at Mitch Tambo's Dreamtime Princess now. Uh, Mitch, congratulations. That's an absolutely incredible clip and uh, a big celebration of strong, beautiful women in that as well. 
Ah, well that sound means it's time to play this or that. We've played it before, so you know the drill. Uh, 60 seconds on the clock, as many questions as you can answer in that time. Mitch, are you ready? Let's get it. Your time starts now. You're a Sesame Street ambassador. Who is better, Bert or Ernie? Oh, uh, I think Ernie. People are like, hey Bert, hey Bert. <laughs> uh, what scares you most about being a new dad? The sleepless nights or changing nappies? Sleepless nights. A pineapple, does it belong on pizza, yes or no? 100%. Good, we can chat again. Uh, the emu or the koala? Uh, the dinner one, emu. Oh, you could eat it. Uh, if you could fly or be invisible, which would you choose? Ah, oh, that's a tough one. Um, I'll go fly, we'll go fly. <laughs> uh, should schools teach more on Aboriginal culture, yes or no? 100%. Uh, can we expect to see a live tour from you soon? Oh, I'd like to say yes, that's for sure. Yes. A summer or winter? Summer. A nice cup of tea or a glass of wine? Oh, a cup of tea for me, for sure. And finally, should everyone jump online and purchase the new album Dreamtime Princess, available now? 100%. Dreamtime Princess across all digital platforms. Go and get it. Uh, well, we are out of time. He'll love and the title track of the new album, Dreamtime Princess, are available now. And you can follow Mitch on all the socials at Mitch Tambo. Mitch Tambo, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Let's get it. Thanks, brother. Yanni and Gully. <laughs> Still to come, master mixologist Monsieur Cocktail to shake and not stir us. Now, while I go bust out some squats and tone these chubby cheeks, here is your You Go Think movie title. Uh, it's a male face, some cutting instruments and two hands. Back soon. <laughs> Okay, seems I need to do more than four squats in a commercial break to tone this thing up. <laughs> Never mind. Your You Go Think clue was a male face, some cutting instruments, and two hands. That was super easy one, of course. It was Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> How do you feel about the recent controversy surrounding Under Armour wear and the uh, sweatshops that they run? I have not heard about that. Do you think that what Under Armour is doing is a rather unethical? Um, they're on sweatshops, probably. Would you ever wear underwear, uh, under, uh, under armour items of clothing? I do have some items, so but I. I didn't know about that. No, but you wouldn't like wear a big blazer of it on your chest and parade it around St Kilda or something like that, would you? Probably not. No, good thing they go for that. Uh, oh, under armour, I like it. Very nice. <laughs> Tonight, we have something very different from our typical variety segment on Live from St Kilda. We wanted to entertain you like we do every week, but also with summer coming, we wanted to give you something to go and try yourself. Inspired by years of working with the world's most awarded professionals, from the French Riviera to London, Monsieur Cocktail has carefully crafted a series of unique sensory cocktail experiences that you can book for your next event. Here to give us a taste and I guess a sip of their exciting experience, please welcome uh, Master Mixologist Max Beal! Hello Max! Hey Ben, how are you? Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, we've got some alcohol here, or as I like to call it, memory loss in a bottle. <laughs> well, not the lime juice, I'm guessing that's just lime juice. Correct. We need a bit of juice and uh, homemade syrup to mix all of those um, booze together. Now, how did you get into uh, what we're doing today? That's a very good question. Well, I've been doing it for now 17 years, and I travelled the world around, and I think being a Frenchman, you know, we love to cook. Oh, you're French? Well, ah, you're playing for Chinyam. Um, <laughs> uh, we love to cook, and we love to drink wine, and um, that brought me to making cocktails. That was the only thing uh, missing uh, on my um, resume. Nice. So you do this uh, a lot at home? You make lots of cocktails? Absolutely, but not Is that because your friends are pretty dull and you just need to sort of get through it somehow? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I know my crew drink a lot and I think that's often Excellent. just to, uh, There's a few just to get well. through putting up with me all day. So what are we making today? So today something very simple, um, refreshing, uh, like a summery cocktail, right? A bit yes. fruity as well. Have you made cocktails yeah, before, I, Ben? I have, I have, and I'm also a little bit fruity, so it works out well. Ooh, fantastic. So, first thing first, when you make a cocktail, we're going to give you tips and take you through the whole experience. Nailed it. Someone's got some skills. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, back home, a few uh, tips for you. When you make a cocktail, always use the cheapest ingredients first. So here will be uh, lime. I'm the king of cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the set, we're, we're nailing it. <laughs> so simply because if you mess up the ratio, it's very easy to uh, swap around, check it in the sink and yep. try again, rather than wasting some precious local Australian rum. 
Oh, beautiful. Fantastic. All right, let's crack on. And first thing first, we're going to use our jigger here. So a jigger is a measuring cup. That's how we call it in the bar. It's yep. a jigger. So this side will be one shot. When I used to drink, this used to be my jigger. This doesn't look like it's going to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All righty. So single shot, double shot. Yep. And just follow my steps. So we don't need steps. that side, obviously. Just the double shot side. <laughs> so I will do it first so yep. to show you how to do it. And then you can do it yourself. I'll be here super supervising. So one shot of lime juice. Yep. Here you go. You want to be as close as possible to your tin to just yep. make sure everything goes inside the tin. Oh. Very good, excellent. <laughs> and then, so we got like, the sour part of the cocktail. Yep. Um, here we need a bit of orange liquor, so just a half shot, like yep. that. Here you just go. a half shot of that. Yep. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Perfect. You can't help it, can you? No. <laughs> That's all good. We're gonna. Oh, it's real. I thought we might have had prop, <laughs> prop ingredients what? or something on really? here. There's no way. <laughs> all right, then here we have about 20 ml of pomegranate syrup. Yep. So the fruity touch. Okay. That's yours. About 20 ml of this one, yep. So pretty much a full shot, just underneath. Perfect. Okay, I even I learned how to do that twist thing to stop oh, it spilling. Very I'm very professional. <laughs> Looks like you've done that before. <laughs> All righty, so we've got all our ingredients, so for the audience, we are looking now, at... Now, this, we can get all of this from our local supermarket and things. We can get the pomegranate syrup, the, uh, the lime juice, uh, and uh, like a orange, orange liqueur. Liquor. Yep, beautiful. You're right, you can get that anywhere in your supermarket. And here, the most important, um, a double shot of Australian rum. So you're going to be happy about this one, Ben. Up, here you go. Wow, all right. <laughs> I'm shaking. I'm legitimately nervous. Anyway, this is like well. the most good. nervous I've ever been doing. So we're putting the whole amount of this in, are we? Yes, double shots. Once we have a cocktail, I can guarantee you won't be shaking. It smells like hand sanitizer. Um, it's no, not, not like the, <laughs> no criticism. It's just in general. This always smells like hand sanitizer. I think because a lot of uh, the gin companies and that started using their distilleries to make. Hands and that's right. That ignore me. Great ignore me. No, not so that's good. Fine. That's a good point. It's just the ethanol and a bit of a vanilla and the aromatics inside the rum. Sometimes, you know, it can smell um, odd to some of us, and that's all good. So, you have your cocktail ready at home. Let me repeat the recipe. We're very happy to give you the recipe away. We've got 20 ml of pomegranate syrup, 15 ml of orange liquor. Uh, 30 ml of lime juice and 60 ml of uh, white Australian rum. Or if you have kids, 120 ml <laughs> of the gin. <laughs> so now, crucial ingredients in our cocktails. We're gonna add a bit of ice in our shaker on the side. And we're going to delicately pour our cocktail on the top. Yep. Up. So remember, tip number one, when you make cocktails at home, now, are we going to be using the sand and that a little bit later on? Are, are we first. making sex on the beach? Is that what's happening? Kind of. It's not a, it's not a chip on the beach. It's like a better version of it. Ah, I was going to say, there's going to be a better version because the last time I had sex on the beach, it kind of got all between my cheeks and everywhere. It was really <laughs> annoying. Uh, the cocktail was pretty good too. Fantastic. So, a bit of ice. We've got the ingredients ready to go. We're going to pour all the ingredients over ice and yep. close the tin. So, you, know, you want to give it a good tap, make sure it's closed properly. Fantastic. Now you're left or right-handed, Ben? Uh, right-handed. Fantastic. Like me, so left hand underneath, you grab your tin very safely. And then on uh, uh, right hand, sorry, on the top. And then we don't want to shake in front. We're just going to be on the side, just for safety reasons. Uh, okay. If we you know, yep. drop the tin, you don't want to send it my way. Let's go back to back. When my baby, when my baby smiles at me, I go to Rio. Difference between shaken and stirred? That's a very good question. So here, because we have different texture as lime juice, the bit of pulp of the fruit, the syrup are very thick as well. Yep. So you want to make sure they mix very well and we, are, we want to add a lot of dilution to your cocktail as well. Okay. So you get the best of the aroma. So if you're... If, and if, also, the aloe is too short. So. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how cool do I... I'm not going to work at that definitely. <laughs> Really good. Look, you did a great job because there's a great condensation on your shaker. So now I'm going to open it for you. Yep. Bit of a tap. It's not an easy task. Here we go. Now we're gonna make it straight in our glasses, and we want a bit of. We're not putting sand in too, are we? Because not I feel like yet. Give a bit You'll of a see crunch. the theatrical serve will make a lot of sense in a minute. Ooh, because okay. cocktails are fun, right? They are. It's not about yeah. Having fun, connecting together, and 
getting a delightful, beautiful. Oh, let's grab some of this. Up. Oh, you're doing the job, fantastic. There you go, let's grab, sit. All so, right. Now, you're going to pull, uh, put your strainer on the top. Yep. Right. So use your hands, um, grab the tin firmly, and that's it. With, the, uh, with your finger on the top, sorry. You'll do the steer, and then on your left hand, you're going to use a double strainer. Yep. Come above it and just drop it all. Can you smell oh, the juice? Oh, wow. Look at the color of that. It's Absolutely very beautiful. Exotic. Here you have it. Then leave your strainer on the top like that. Yep. So easy, right? Yeah, check it in there. That's it. So now, let's try and see if it's as good as your last oh, section. You know what? I'm, I'm going to invite uh, Mia and Tony. Uh, come up. You guys can have a, a little mm. sip of this for me. Well, I'm not going to drink, so I've got a show to do. Have a little sip of that. Uh, this is uh, Mia, our producer, and Tony, our voiceover artist. Tony, enjoy. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, how good is that? How good is that? Beautiful. Thank you. Um, you can enjoy some time at home. It's uh, the endless summer. <laughs> Getting ready for the Australian summer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent. Thank you so much uh, for recipes, ideas, and of course to book a masterclass. Be sure to follow Max Beal at monsieurcocktail.au. That's at monsieurcocktail.au. And that is it for today. We'll be back next week with a breathtaking performance from Tash York, music from ASP, ASAP, and Thomas Keating. Friday Fuzzy Feels is back, and live in the studio, we'll be joined by not one but two guests. Eve and Ali from Australian Music Royalty, the Shantuzis. Be sure to jump on our socials and join all the behind the scenes goss, random prizes, and even games at live from St Kilda. Until then, look after yourselves and one another. I'm Ben Murphy. Bye bye! Oh, that's great. Thank you so much.